Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Mental Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to my blind Let's Play of Firewatch. This game uh, was just uh, just went live just uh, maybe about an hour ago, and I know very very little about the game. I watched, I think it was an E3 trailer for it a short while ago, and thought it looked really cool. Uh, so I wanted to play it, um, hoping for something maybe a little bit different. And if you will indulge me, I would like to uh, read the description of the game from their website, because I think it really sets up the game quite nicely. Firewatch is a mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness, where your only emotional lifeline is the person on the other end of a handheld radio. The year is 1989. You are a man named Henry who has retreated from your messy life to work as a fire lookout in the Wyoming wilderness. Perched atop a mountain, it's your job to find smoke and keep the wilderness safe. An especially hot, dry summer has everyone on edge. Your supervisor, a woman named Delilah, is available to you at all times over a small handheld radio and is your only contact with the world you've left behind. But when something strange draws you out of your lookout tower and into the world below, you'll explore a wild and unknown environment facing questions and making interpersonal choices that can build or destroy the only meaningful relationship you have. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that sounds like a pretty cool game. And uh, I'm excited to get started, uh, but I'm also a little bit anxious because I, I um, just after reading that, I don't want to screw up my relationship with Delilah. <laughs> just after reading that. Uh, so I'm like really worried about uh, what choices I'm going to make and the consequences they may have. So... I welcome you. I hope you enjoy this uh, Let's Play, and let's get started. New game, empty game. Well, let's put it in here. This sounds like a good place to start. Um, am I supposed to do something here? I see Julia. Do I click? Oh, I guess I click. Okay. No, apparently we see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. <laughs> you are drunk. Okay, so I guess these are two choices um, that we can uh, say to her. We could say, uh, so, what's your, you know, major or you, you're pretty. Oh, this sounds way smoother, right? This is like the only, th the kind of thing you would only say when you're drunk. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply, confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Ha ha! Wow, if only it were that easy, right? Hmm, there's a backpack here. Oh well, look, you could. Oh, I could see my body! Look at that! Look at that! Look at a little ragdoll. Let's walk around the elevator. I guess we'll pick up the backpack, huh? Okay. Backpack is on. Tie it around our stomach here. Parking garage. Small parking garage. Maybe... I don't know. Is this where we work or where we live? I'm gonna walk around and look over here. So in case you've never watched one of my Let's Plays before, I tend to like to explore. I like to um, make an attempt to see everything that there is to see. In other words, I try to be thorough, but um, <laughs> I have found out through uh, comments from people watching that I'm not as thorough as I always thought I was. I do still tend to miss things, so if I miss something, please feel free to let me know in the comments. No spoilers, please. Okay, so it doesn't look like anything's going on down here. 
can't get in there. Truck bed. Oh, load gear. Okay, I could zoom and orient. Lower compass. Okay. Alright, so... Well, I know what direction I'm heading. North. Okay. Let's load our gear. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. All right. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. <laughs> okay, we have a choice here. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. Or you adopt the Shepherd and name him Mayhem. Well, uh, I don't know about you guys, but... Um, if this is the one she wants, this is the one she gets. So she's going to get the beagle. Besides, I love beagles. So I love German Shepherds too. But my first dog was a beagle. So we'll go with the beagle. Bucket's a good dog. And a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. Well, of course you do. 1979. So this is four years after we met Julia. I'm good at math. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Really? Well, it doesn't say it's the first time she's asked this question. I mean, I would imagine that in four years you talked about kids, right? Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. Ooh. All right, uh, that would be pretty good, or one day, why rush? It's been four years, dude. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Okay, here's our truck. Looks like we keep our truck pretty clean. No garbage in the back, no fast food wrappers on the floor. It's kind of nice. What kind of truck is it? Mm, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Hey, what's this? There's a hat here. It says Cody, Wyoming. Oh my gosh, have you ever been to Cody, Wyoming? It is beautiful. Go to Cody, Wyoming. It is just absolutely beautiful. Well, let's see. We could uh, examine it. Yep, it's a hat. It's a hat. Let's put it on. Yeah, why not? Let's just put on this strange hat we found on the ground. <laughs> why not? Okay, so we've got uh, a gate keeping us from going this way, it would seem. Fire danger. So it's say extreme, extreme today, prevent forest fires. Who's this guy? We're Smokey the Bear. What the? All right. Maybe Smokey the Bear is copyrighted or something. I don't know. I expected to see Smokey Dog on it. This is, this looks like an old truck. With um, does it have two gas cans? Two gas tanks? I mean, is that a thing? I don't know. I've never had a truck myself. Thoroughfare Trailhead. Two Forks. Region Overview. Do not forget to check in. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. No fireworks. Warning. Thoroughfare Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Thoroughfare is a primitive backcountry trail. Let's see. The trail may be vague along several stretches. 
and disappears entirely at some... some something. It has many confusing switchbacks, maybe? Alright, well, that's not a problem. We can handle that, right? Alright, let's memorize this real quick. Uh, we are at uh, Thoroughfare, Thoroughfare Trailhead. This says to Thoroughfare Trailhead. Where are we on this map? I don't know. I don't see a, um, you are here. But if we are at Thoroughfare, that's hard for me to say, Thoroughfare Trailhead, I guess we're off in this direction, right? That says to Thoroughfare Trailhead. Maybe this is where we are right here, right here at the starting. So we should cross a river here shortly. Well, uh, I guess we're going for a little hike, I guess. I don't know where Julia is. And uh, I'm not actually sure what year this is. Um, is this after? Is this? Are we in 1989 yet? Oh, it's getting dark. Okay, 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad or you ignore her. Oh, come on, let's, let's not be childish here. Let's get mad. Let her know. We're mad, man. You're not supposed to be hanging out that late without letting me know where you are. I don't know if I say this. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. Well, that sounds like a productive argument. She knows you mean it, and it hurts her feelings. Ah, maybe we should have ignored her. <laughs> uh, 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Oh, we're all He-Man. Did you see the truck we drive? Come on. You look awesome. Oh, thank you. Okay. It's like, uh, is it dusk? Oh yes, the stars are coming out. Oh, how beautiful. Just, just beautiful. What does the sign say? It says, Two Forks. Fire lookout. Two Forks lookout tower, eight more miles still. That's, that's pretty long for walking at night, right? All right, let's, let's walk eight more miles. Spacebar to climb over obstructions. All right, I can do that. Maybe that was the morning? <clears throat> 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. What? Bucket gets kicked. But but ba fuck d, -d dog Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront <laughs> the attacker. You scare him away or you beat his goddamn face in. Ah, oh, man. I kicked my dog, man. I'm just worried that bad things will happen. See, this is... Uh, if this happened, like, in the spur of the moment, you wouldn't have time to sit here and think about this, you know? I could see grabbing the guy and beating his face in without thinking of the consequences, but since I have all this time here to just sit here and talk to you guys about it, um, I'm afraid of choosing this because I'm afraid of what the consequences might be. Um, but we're a manly man, right? This is what manly men do? This is what I'm told, anyway. I would never consider myself to be a manly man. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. 
you cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Wow, these are the two choices. You convince her not to take the job, or you agree if she commutes back and forth. Holy crap, these seem like both very selfish choices. I don't think we should... I mean, this is a great job. Uh, I don't like either one of these choices. Where's my other choice? Um, well, I guess, I guess I'm going to go with this one. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Nineteen eighty-five. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. What the hell, Julia? She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Uh, I don't know. I think that maybe we should... I don't know. I mean, this is... I don't know. I think we should talk about it. We should talk to somebody about it. This is pretty bad. I was going to say, well, this is the first time it's happened. But maybe it isn't. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. Ugh. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Journal. So it looks like uh, we're going to pick up the journal here. <laughs> so strong. Oh man, I didn't read it. I just looked at the picture. <laughs> I was distracted by the picture. I didn't get to read any of it. Uh, through the magic of YouTube and editing, you guys could pause it and read it. And I could always go back and read it again since I recorded it. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on perma permanent medical leave. Alright, I didn't know this was going to be a depressing game. <laughs> Gosh. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. 
You decide to move her into a full-time care facility, or you are determined to take care of her by yourself. Uh, I mean, it's obvious. this is obviously very difficult. I mean, we're counting the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel. But <clears throat> we're determined to take care of her by herself. How far back I could go this way? Okay, just to here, it would seem. <laughs> All right, game's not gonna let me get too far off track here. It's beautiful out here. Looks like maybe this little stream down there, maybe. Maybe just some misty areas in the lower areas. A little log to walk across here. Oh, oh, look at that. Hello, how are you? <laughs> oh. Oh, gosh. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her. Like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her. And she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door, or you trust that she sleeps like a rock. No, I don't. This, this right here, <laughs> I would be so worried there'd be like a fire or something and she wouldn't be able to get out. <sighs> you go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. Nineteen eighty nine. Oh boy. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point one oh and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister in law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next pla plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. 